I graduated from college and couldn't find a job and I was like, what is this? I did not take out $50,000 worth of school loans to not be able to find work because I graduated during the recession. Um, and then it happened again when I became a mom and I was like, what is this? I don't know who I am anymore. Hey, 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 guys. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Journey to Purpose with me, Erica Lasan. And I am super stoked about today's chat, y'all, because I am giving you all the tea. All right. Today, I'm going to be sharing a story with you guys about how I was terminated from what I thought was my dream job back in 2019. And even with all the heartache, the pain and frustration that came with that experience, let me tell you something. Little did I know I would be lifing lemonade, okay? So today we're talking about life and lemonade, how to make the best out of bad situations, and also how to leverage your joy in those situations to make the most of what you want next. But before we hop into this story, I wanna let you guys know if you're listening, the audio may change a little bit because this is coming to you guys as a faith-fueled, purpose-propelled replay that I did on my Instagram page live in 2020. Um, if you're not following me on Instagram, you definitely wanna be doing that, at Erica Lasan. And if you're watching on YouTube, then you'll notice that the video is a little different, and that's why, because this is a replay. With all that said, let's get to it. But I wanna tell y'all about how I was fired from my job last year, okay? I was terminated from my job out of the blue. Um, <laughs> and it was something that really kind of threw me for a loop when it happened. But I also wanna use this as just part of my testimony as to why everything that happens glorifies God. And this was after I'd kind of gone on my soul journey of trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life because I was in this new season of being a stay-at-home mom with two kids. Um, and I, I realized I had a lot of gifts that I really wanted to use. And I just wanted like my motherhood journey to be different. So this is again, a part of me and my transitional phase and why I, if I'm in a position where I understand and know what it's like to be in transition. So um, at that time, I'd been looking for a job for like eight months and because I wanted to wait until Jace was officially a year old before we started looking for work again. Um, so that way I knew that if we left him with somebody, he was in a position where he was eating solid food, I didn't have to breastfeed, yada, 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 yada. If you're a parent, then you know what the situation is. Um, so I started looking for a job and um, I wrote down a list of things that I wanted in a job, like the salary that I wanted, the type of environment that I wanted to be working in, um, one that catered to my gifts and skills, one that um, allowed me to interact with people because I really love people and I really wanted to help people, um, one that allowed me to um, be creative, basically. And I ended up finding this job at a place that I'm not even going to name because um, I don't want to give them that attention, but it was a job that I thought was so perfect. I was so excited, guys. Like, it hit, like, I had 11 prayer points. It hit, I think, 9 out of the 11 prayer points. So I was like, Lord, this is it. This is lit. Like, I was so stoked. Um, and every day that I got to go work there, I was so excited and so grateful for the opportunity to learn and work in an environment like that. It was creative. Um, it uh, allowed me to work from home partially. It was supposed to pay me what I wanted, but then that became another thing. Um, so it was just a lot of things that I was really excited for. Um, fast forward three months, I got terminated out of the blue. Okay, I'm talking like the CEO of the company basically called me on a day when I was working from home and was like, yeah, so um, your services are no longer required. And I was like, what? Uh, okay. Um, but because I like to operate from a position of giving people the benefit of the doubt and also recognizing, again, and this is just a spiritual thing, this is a God thing, recognizing that everything ultimately comes back to glorify God, okay? Recognizing that nothing that is ever done in your life is a waste. Recognizing that um, your pain leads to purpose and through all things and in all things, what you must maintain is your joy. So when he told me that uh, he was going to let me go and I was like okay wow all right well thank you for the opportunity thank you for you know putting me in in this space of getting to know this thing better like I just felt I, I was at peace with it let me just put it that way 
I was very much at peace with the situation. I was like, all right, I guess that this is it. Um, and then I just wrapped up a couple of things and I was like, well, I'm going to log out of all of your stuff. And I just, um, need you to clarify that I'm going to be receiving the rest of my payments and all of this and all of that, just tying all the loose ends. And he was like, oh yeah, sure, sure, sure. So that was the thing. Boom. Going forward, I was unemployed and back <laughs> to looking for work again. But let me tell y'all how the Holy Spirit works, okay? Out of the, the blue, like the next day, something within my spirit was like, ooh, you didn't completely tie up the loose ends. You should send an email asking him to write this termination thing in um, an email. So I messaged him back and was like, hey, by the way, I know that we had this conversation on this day. I just need these things in writing. One, that I am officially terminated. So as I start to look for other work, there's no saying that I didn't do what I was supposed to do. And also clarifying um, how much is owed to me, the balance of what you need to pay, because he was already behind in payments, um, and all the other things. Y'all, let me tell you how that one email like basically saved my behind because fast forward five months after that, um, this man was not trying to pay me. He was not trying to pay me the balance of my stuff, okay? I had to take him to court. And so like there were a lot of things that came from that, but basically what came of that experience and the pain of that experience, because it was painful in some way, um, knowing that I had to go through that, knowing that I'd lost my job out of the blue, knowing that I wasn't being compensated for the work that I had done, knowing that it felt like this person that I had trusted and I had put so much good work into and I'd received so many positive words about the work that was done, knowing that that hard work was being taken advantage of, wasn't being compensated, um, and also now that it felt like evil was just trying to keep me from getting what I deserved. But in that moment, the Holy Spirit is always on point. Let me tell you, okay? Because after that, a whole bunch of other things happened. But that email was really the premise for me then being able to ultimately get the money that I was owed. But it was also something that, that stood as a reminder. Like this whole experience, really, again, that everything ultimately comes back to glorify God. Because let me tell you what happened from this transitional phase um, as it relates to my, my professional journey. This job was the last job that I said I would ever take. After this job, I realized within myself that I had all of the pieces that were necessary for me to build what I wanted to build. And I mean, I've dabbled in entrepreneurship for the past 10, 10 to 13 years. Like I've been an entrepreneur so I, since I was 13. So technically for the past 20 years, this is something that I've known and done. But it was after this experience that I said, bump that, I'm not looking for another job. It's not worth my time to be working for someone else, building their dreams and not being committed to my own. It's not worth my energy um, putting towards something where I'm not fully appreciated. And then there's always this aspect of um, allowing your dreams to be controlled by somebody else. When really, again, just as I shared in that devotional word, everything that we have uh, everything that we need is within us, okay? Within our gifts, within our talents, within the spirit at God that is constantly at work on our behalf and, and within us if we just know how and when to silence our spirit to get clear on what it is that he is telling us and how he's telling us, okay? I spoke a little bit about that in last week's Faith Field Purpose Propelled Chat. Um, but once I got real quiet and real still with the spirit, because um, it, it got to a point where I was like, this is not for me. This is not for me. Working for other people, I've never really loved it. I don't like people telling me when I got to use the bathroom or how long I can eat, who I can talk to on the phone. After this, I was like, forget this. I'm not working for anybody else because I've never felt as though my gifts and talents were fully utilized. Working for someone else, I, they only got like a portion of my talent and it never seemed as though they wanted to uh, fully utilize it. I could only... I could only be great to the extent at which they allowed me. Um, so it took me a while, but after I got real silent and real um, secure in this and real um, 
grounded in my faith because that's really what it is like and also recognizing that I deserve to live fully in my joy I didn't deserve to live in my joy after my nine to five was over I wanted to feel the joy that I felt in working in my stuff or on my stuff all day every day in all the ways okay and so with this in mind I started to commit to the vision of what my dreams actually were um, and and in their entirety so as I got really still and really grounded in my joy and really grounded in gratitude and really grounded in my faith um, and I started to listen to what the Lord was telling me and the ways in which he was telling me he then began to reveal things to me and how I should um, go about doing this and it's amazing like if I could tell y'all all the ways in which the Holy Spirit is just always at work <laughs> on your behalf and you just you don't even realize it so many things people see as coincidence but they're actually not coincidence okay we need to start recognizing that and learning that as we live by faith the lord then um rewards us with his faithfulness and putting us in the places and times and situations that we actually need to be in and also giving us discernment so that we recognize um the the blessings in the messings <laughs> That, that, that was a me thing um, but then we're able to bless the mess like right now with this corona thing that's happening with all of the stuff that's happening um, as it relates to racial tension and everything so many people have counted 2020 out but let me tell you if you are in a position where you're leading in joy and your purpose you recognize that there are ways even now for you to be blessed in the mess and also for you to bless others in the mess and through the mess um so it gets me excited i told you guys last year um and I, i've mentioned this a couple of times but i'm gonna keep mentioning it because it's a part of my testimony and the lord at work but at one point um i started to pray and i started to see numbers everywhere at one point um the holy spirit I became baptized in the Holy Spirit. Um, so I started to speak in tongues. Um, and that was a whole thing. Then after I received the, the gift of tongues, I was told to pray for the gift of prophecy. So I've been praying for the gift of prophecy. Um, after that, I started seeing the numbers everywhere and recognizing that the Lord was speaking to me through numbers. And um, I'm still even praying for discernment as to how the number situation works, but I know that it's real. Um, after that, I received the message that my, my anchor theme for 2020 needed to be Hebrews 11.1, 1, which talks about living by faith. So as I did my vision board and as I talk about um, my themes for each year, last year it was surrender. This year it was, it, it's Hebrews 11.1. 1. I prayed literally, Lord, confirm that this is not a me thing. Please make it a Holy Spirit thing and let me know that it's it's what you say it is, not what I say it is. And when I tell you the Lord confirmed, not once, not twice, not thrice, but twice, four times he confirmed like four times in four different ways so if I had any doubt that it was him it was all washed away okay like the Holy Spirit is so intentional he is so intentional and divine in his design if only we would pay attention okay I keep talking about the trees I keep talking about the way the world works like he is so purposeful about everything that he does why not your life for everyone who doubts that they have a purpose for everyone who feels as though they are missing something for everyone who thinks that they can't create the life that they want for everyone who thinks that they are a waste of space or that their experiences are are lost like everything the lord does is intentional and by design and ultimately it all comes back to glorify him okay the lord's the lord's way of doing things is to reveal and also to help create relationship because that's really what he wants he wants us to have a divine relationship with him and the beautiful part about it is so many pe people think that when you come to serve christ or when you come to know the lord that like you're tied up in um all of these rules and regulations and things that you can't do but really what you gain is freedom freedom to live your best life and I'm not talking about just living for the gram like true freedom it's not about having all the monetary gains because you can have all the money in the world and still be depressed still feel lost still feel like a waste of space still feel like you are not living in your purpose so again you feel lost still be confused it's not about money but as you live in your purpose 
and the Lord does with your life what he planned to do with it you'll find that all the money like the monetary things that you want will eventually come to pass but more importantly you'll be grounded in joy you'll be able to live joyfully which is what the Lord intended for us when he put us on this word um, on this earth had Adam and Eve not messed up y'all like we'd be we'd be living good right now like had they not eaten from the tree of life and introduced sin into our being like we'd really just be living like some type of utopian lifestyle just hanging out with the animals living naked amongst the land like basking in in the sun and you know doing all the fun things that we we want to do but because of their actions now we 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 have to find our way back to living uh in alignment with how the lord wants us to be and what he put us here to do and really what he wants us to do is just live according to the purpose and the will that he's put on our lives um all right so taking this back to the book of job so i've told you guys a little bit about my experience and how ultimately going through that really hard time of like why is this happening to me but not in a way where i was like super down down trotting and like distraught because again i had a, a sense of peace knowing that the lord wouldn't bring me here he wouldn't do this for no reason part of the reason why he put me in that position where i lost the job that i was super stoked about um where i had to fight to get the rest of my money where i had to then put myself in a position to take control of my own destiny and recognizing like i don't want to work for anybody else all of these things happen so that I could have this conversation with you guys, but more so, so that I could come full circle in my uh, callings and working specifically with people in transitional phases. Had that not happened with um, the last job that I had, none of this would have been made clear to me. I would have still gone on thinking, oh man, this job is the best thing ever. And in doing that, I would have been operating at a fraction of my potential. When you are able to work for yourself, and it's, this isn't a calling for everyone to become an entrepreneur because not everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur and that is totally okay. What I really want to promote more than anything is people living in their purpose. If you're working at a job where you are aligned with your purpose and you're living in the vision of what you want your life to be, then that's a completely different story. But the thing is, so many people aren't clear about what their purpose is. So many people um, don't want to take the time to figure it out. Some people don't think that they have the energy. Some people don't think they have the resources. Some people don't think that they have uh, the time, which is crazy because... Um, <laughs> You don't have time not to be living in your purpose, okay? Like, tomorrow's not guaranteed, and the last thing you would want is to look back on a life that um, was lived for other people and lived for other people, like, trying to cater to other people's expectations um, for you. Anyway, um, you know, like, if you're aligned in everything that you do and, 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 and serving your purpose and serving the world around you, then that's a completely different story. But... The most important thing is that you know your purpose and that you live in it each and every single day. That experience with that job that I thought was the end all, well not end all be all because that's never the case, but I thought it was the answer to all my prayers. The Lord used that job and that horrible experience to show me um, his way. And he continues to show me his way each and every single day. So the other part of this message is the fact that I, in my devotional reading, like my Bible reading part, um, I'm still reading the book of Job while well, I finished it today. But if you guys don't know about the book of Job, it basically talks about how affluent Job was and how he had all the money all the things all the wisdom all the like like the prosperity that one would expect and how it was all taken from him as a test of God and how he was like really miserable and in pain like not only was his wealth taken not only were his children killed not only um was he like basically put in a position where he went from like here to here to the point where people didn't want to look at him but he also then had like boils all over his body so he was like disgusting to look at like he was just put in a miserable place but and he was trying to um talk to the lord like why is this happening to me and people were like um that's because it's your fault you weren't acting in a righteous way not knowing that it was really the lord just testing him so anyway i finished that and i want to talk about that a little bit today too because it again it talks about being in a transitional phase and how ultimately again everything comes back to glorify god because after job was heard by the lord um 
he was restored like everything that he had was restored and to a point that put him in a more affluent space he actually had more money and it even says in job 42 verse um verses 10 through 12 let me read to y'all real quick I don't like paraphrasing the Bible. It feels weird. When Job prayed for his friends, the Lord restored his fortunes. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as before. Then all his brothers, sisters, and former friends came and feasted with him in his home. They were all not trying to hang out with him when he was gross, though. <laughs> and they consoled him and comforted him because of all the trials the Lord had brought against him. And each of them brought him a gift of money and a gold ring. Um, so the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life even more than in the beginning ultimately like fighting with his friends and being like i'm telling y'all i'm not lying i am righteous i don't know why the lord is doing this to me so the lord answered by basically saying like who are y'all what do y'all know y'all know absolutely nothing okay but job you were right i was testing you a little bit so job 38 verse 1 says then the lord answered job from the whirlwind after he's been like lord why are you doing this to me who is this that questions my wisdom with such ignorant words brace yourself because i have some questions for you and you must answer them where were you when i laid the foundations of the earth tell me if you know so much do you know what the meshes were determined and who who did the surveying what supports its foundations and who laid its cornerstone as the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy who defined the boundaries of the sea as it burst forth from the womb and as I clothed it with clouds and thickness, uh, thick darkness, for I locked it behind barred gates and, uh, limiting its shores. I said, thus far, no further you will come. Here your proud ways must stop. So then he continues to basically go all along and highlight all of the ways in which he created the heavens and this like blew my mind and just thinking about how powerful the Lord is and his creation and intention and how he must work but it says have you visited the treasuries of snow have you seen where the hail is made and stored I have reserved it for the time of trouble for the day of battle and war where is the path to the origin of light where is the home of the east wind now think about this like we look up and we just see the sky right and beyond that we see the universe and all the galaxies or we know that they exist because we don't see any of it um really in all of its entirety but just thinking about all of this and how up there we just see clouds but here the lord is basically giving us insight into how heaven actually is like there are rooms for all of the elements like <laughs> Can you guys imagine like a room for the snow like every time we receive snow the Lord's like yeah Just open just open the the snow gate a little bit let a little trickle down like I don't know I just think it's really funny to listen to see how the Lord speaks or when he speaks in the word and also Jesus in his speaking he was he was actually quite funny Jesus had a, a sense of humor anyway so then it goes on to say in uh, chapter uh, verse 30 34 can you shout to the clouds and make it rain can you make lightning appear and cause it to strike as you direct it who gives intuition and instinct who is wise enough to count all the clouds who can tilt the water jars of heaven turning the dry dust to clumps of mud like again like the picture everything serves purpose everything works according to the lord's direction and divine um instruction like it's so exciting to fathom it's really awe-inspiring and also like that part about who gets intuition and ins instinct back then they probably didn't know it as such but it's the holy spirit because i mean this is the old testament so jesus hadn't come around yet um so but the spirit was still alive then but they probably just didn't call it the holy spirit but the spirit is who gives intuition and instinct and he's the wise one. He's the great counselor. He's the one that directs us. So even in our moments of like sadness or our moments of transition where we're trying to figure out like, what is this? Like last year when I lost the job and I was term terminated and I was like, what is this? And then um, the next day where the Holy Spirit li literally whispered to me, ask him for an email so you can get your stuff right um that wasn't a me thing that was a holy spirit thing and i continue to give him the glory because it's just one way of the many ways that he's continued to um, show me that it's his instruction that is really guiding us at all times um anyway so as we continue to go through job and the rest of 
uh, the Lord talking to Job in his way. He then goes on to highlight his creation. And it's like so exciting because the Lord really just talks about how bomb his creation is. Um, like he talks about these animals specifically that he's made. And, and if you read the description, I really highly encourage you guys read Job. Like there's some really great stuff in there. But he basically talks about the stork. Then he talks about um, ostriches. And he talks about the hippo and horses and crocodiles. And to us, these are just animals. But the way the Lord describes how he created these things, you would think that these are the greatest animals of all time. Um, and in a lot of ways they are because they are a part of his creation. So I'm going to read to you guys real quick his description of a crocodile like who cares about crocodiles right now I mean I, there are a lot of animal people that care about crocodiles don't tag them on this um, I'm not saying that we shouldn't care about animals we definitely should but like the crocodile of all the animals like okay but <laughs> here in Job 41 verse 1 and I'm gonna just read this whole description um, and I hope that you guys keep listening because there's a point to this at the end all right so uh, chapter 41 verse 1 says, Can you catch a crocodile with a hook or put a noose around its jaw? Can you tie it with a rope through the nose or pierce its jaw with a spike? Will you beg for mercy or implore, uh, will it beg you for mercy or implore you for pity? Will it agree to work for you? Can you make it be your slave for life? Can you make it like uh, a pet like a bird or give it, your, uh, give it to your little girls to play with? Will merchants try to buy it? Will they sell it in their shops? Will it hide... Will its hide be hurt by darts or its head by a harpoon? If you lay a hand on it, you will never forget the battle that follows, and you will never try it again. No, it's useless to try to capture it. The hunter who attempts it will be thrown down. And since no one dares to disturb the crocodile, who would dare to stand up to me? Who will confront me and remain safe? Everything under heaven is mine. I want to emphasize the tremendous strength in the cro crocodile's limbs and throughout its enormous frame. Who can strip off its hide and who can penetrate its double layer of armor? Who can pry open its jaws? For its teeth are terrible. The overlapping scales on the back made it make a shield. They are, they are close together so no air can get between them. They lock together so nothing can penetrate them. When it sneezes, it flashes light. Its eyes are like the red of dawn. Fire and sparks leap from its mouth. Smoke streams from its nostrils, nostrils like streams like stream from a boiling pot on a fire of dry rushes. Yes, its breath would kindle coals for flames shoot from its mouth. The tremendous strength in its neck strikes terror wherever it goes. Its flesh is hard and firm, not soft and fat. Its heart is as hard as rock, as hard as a millstone. When it rises, the mighty are afraid, gripped by terror. No sword can stop it, no spear, nor dart, nor pointed shaft. To the crocodile, iron is nothing, but straw and bronze is rotten wood. Arrow slings, um, arrows cannot make it flee. Stones shot from a sling are as ineffective as, as straw. Clubs do no good, and it laughs at the swish of the javelins. Its belly is covered with scales as sharp as glass. They tear up the ground as it drags through the mud. The crocodile makes the water boil with its commotion. It churns the depths. Um, the water glistens in its wake. One would think the sea had turned white. There is nothing else so fearless anywhere on earth. Of all the creatures, it is the proudest. It is the king of beasts. Um, so this is the Lord describing a crocodile, y'all. A crocodile. Like, we look at crocodiles now like, okay. But think, listen to how, how enamored the Lord was with his creation of a simple crocodile, y'all. A crocodile and if you read the other description of the animals like he talks about a horse he talks about a stork he talks about the ostrich and I want to read those things too but um, maybe you know that's just me and my excitement but they're really beautiful descriptions but the point of me reading that was to, to, to let you guys know how how proud the Lord is of his creation a simple crocodile a crocodile that can't speak to other people, a crocodile that can't create anything with its hands, a crocodile that doesn't have, um, I mean, animals have emotions, but can't articulate its emotions in the same way a human can. If he is that proud of his work in a, an animal as simple as a crocodile, how much more proud is he of his work in us as humans? 
And how much more has he purposed us as humans, okay? He's given us all divine gifts. He's given us all purpose. He's given us, given us intention. He's given us all power in our purpose. The question is, what are we going to do with them? Continue to work nine to fives. Continue to just go through, floating through life thinking, life thinking that we have no control over our destiny. No, 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 no. Let us not live this way. Let us recognize that everything that happens, good, bad, ugly, comes back to glorify God. Let us recognize that the spirit is constantly at work within us. And all we have to do is get silence ourselves and, and get clear, get still so that we can get clear um, and aligned with the, the spirit so that we can listen to those tiny whispers that the Lord is giving us each and every single day to put us on path for what our purpose is and how he wants to use us. Um, I could keep going and talking about this all day. Y'all know my, y'all know the situation. Y'all know the deal. But I'm going to end it here because I think that I've spoken enough. Um, just know this. No matter what you're going through, especially if you're in a transitional phase of life. And this is why I work with y'all because I know y'all. I know the feeling. I know what it is to feel as like all the things that I've mentioned. Um, but just know that this season is where the jewels of joy um, are, are, are created. Okay, this season of transition where people are trying to figure out what to do next and they have absolutely no clue is the season that the Lord will take your pain and turn it into purpose. This is the season where the seeds of your purpose are being planted so that you can have a bountiful harvest of joy and, and, and goodness and blessings in your life. If only you would seek still or seek, seek it, you know. All right. So I know I covered a lot in this week's chat, but there was so much to touch on. I want to know how many of you can relate to that experience of going through a hard time or a transitional phase of your own where you don't know how to make it to joy on the other side. Whether you are a graduate looking to figure out what you really want to do with your life, whether you are a mom who's transitioning into motherhood and you don't recognize yourself anymore, or maybe you're someone who was terminated from your job um, or laid off because of COVID and you're unsure of what to do next. I would love to know in the comments which transitional phase of life you can relate to the most. What was the hard time that you went through? What was the outcome and how were you able to find joy in the journey or were you able to find joy? But if you find yourself overwhelmed, overwork, and over it, and you are looking to gain clarity in your vision, if you are looking to figure out what actually brings you joy, I would love to help you. Get started on your journey to purpose today by visiting my site, ericalassan.com, and getting started with the joy quest. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about how you can work with me one-on-one, -on -one, head over to the site and send me an email, info at ericalassan.com. That's all I have for you this week, and I look forward to connecting with you and chatting with you again next week. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are watching on YouTube. And if you're listening to the podcast, make sure you also subscribe so that you don't miss on any upcoming episodes. I hope you guys have a blessed and wonderful day and I will chat with you later. We are on this journey together. One feel good thing at a time. Bye.